everybody. Uh, good evening, welcome to Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board meeting for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, Laura, if you would do a roll call, please. Mueller? Here. Severson? Here. Larkin? Here. Lewis? Here. Samurai? Here. Palmer? Here. And Superintendent Kathy Kelly? Here. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Um, our mission statement, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed. Our core values are community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Next up would be approval of the agenda. If I get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Lorian. Second. Natty. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. <coughs> Announcements, January 15th, Tuesday at 5 p.m. There'll be a school board listening session from the Family Center. Uh, January 15th at 5.30, there's a school board work session scheduled that, uh, dependent on agenda, may or may not take place. Uh, January 21st, it's a Monday, there's no school. January 22nd at 7 p.m., there'll be a regular school board meeting. And January 25th, which is a Friday, there's no school, it's a grading day. Uh, next will be correspondence. Superintendent Kelly, any correspondence tonight? Mr. Chair and members, there's no correspondence to report at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, communication to the board, citizen and employee representatives. At this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that administration follow up. The board will not take action at this meeting on requests presented at this time. Anybody to speak about? Okay. All right, moving on. There's a consent agenda, which includes the personnel report, minutes of the December 18 school board meeting, and then the treasurer's report for July through October of 2018. Get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Hala? Second. Laura? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Uh, discussion reports, information items. Reports from members of the board. Uh, board members will report on board activities since the last regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Gloria? I have no report. Yeah. Natty? Um, yeah, I was able to attend the AMSD meeting. Um, Lori, you'll be happy to know it was over at Cora, so we all got to see at least part of the building. It was an active school day, so it wasn't a full tour, but of course, it's a beautiful facility. Um, and they graciously let, let us use um, their conference room. We put some stuff, Superintendent Kelly, put some stuff in your packet on Friday so you can see a little bit of what happened there. It was really great to see so many of the state representatives um, there, both the state house and the state. Um, Senate there represented and kind of hearing the concerns of schools, um, which were spelled out in the stuff we got. I was able to attend the uh, Columbia Academy Geography Bee. And as a geography major, I was pleased. Uh, there were a few I didn't even know. So that was, they, they weren't just throwaway questions. I was pleased with that. Um, we just got a glimpse of the JV boys basketball game in between meetings here. Um, and I've been to several swim meets, including a alumni swim meet, which was really fun to watch. Apparently, they do it every year. This is my first year in attendance. And it comes complete with a 50 and 50, which is can you perfectly time 50 meters in exactly 50 seconds, which for them is very slow. But for a normal person would be, can you do it? And, and, it came, and they cap it off with a belly flop contest. So it was pretty fun. I recommend anybody go. It's totally free. Just a fun night. So that's it. Okay. Uh, Laura? Uh, nothing to report other than the organizational meeting prior to this one. Okay. Alan? Uh, the policy subcommittee meeting since our last oh, meeting. Oh, actually, yes, I did. And do that. the organizational meeting. Okay. Mom? 
Yeah, so I have attended just some boys basketball games, the organizational meeting before this, and I've had many conversations with community members lately. And that's it. Sure. Um, I was at the chair meeting prior to this and the organizational meeting prior to this as well. That's all I have to report. Uh, Superintendent Kelly, do you have a report tonight? Uh, Mr. Chair, members, I do not. Okay. Next up would be a department update from the Office of Teaching and Learning. Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly, I'm here this evening with Deputy Director of Teaching and Learning, Tara Tuckrell, and this evening we're here to provide you an update um, with the, for the Office of Teaching and Learning. Of course, our mission is to create worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed, and we focus on our core values of community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Uh, this is an informational update, so there will be no governance involved with this presentation. Uh, so what does the Office of Teaching and Learning do in the district? All kinds of things, as you can see listed there, um, from um, the World's Best Workforce Committee, which is um, our community committee, uh, curriculum, professional development, um, state and federal assessments, reviewing data, different surveys, Gift and Talented Programs, AVID K-12, the title programs, one, two, and three, equity programming, achievement and integration, American Indian education, family engagement, summer programming, Perkins Grant, 21st Century Community Learning Grant, that's our Encore program, and the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant, that is, uh, Tara will be talking about that in a little bit. So all of those things are done by a very small team uh, so we have Wendy Borneton, who is our clerical support, who keeps us all on track. <laughs> Disa Fabeck is our research um, assessment and gifted, gifted um, coordinator. Jill Ashley Grahowski is our staff development coordinator. We have a .5 lead teacher who um, supports the EL programming, Rochelle Kreuzer. We have a .5 discipline supervisor, Leslie Shirk. She's also at Valley View as an assistant principal. She helps uh, review um, the work that we've done with our student handbook and different disciplinary practices throughout the district. Of course, Tara is our deputy director and me, the executive director. So how do we get all of that done with such a small team? Well, we rely heavily on our leadership teams that we have here in the district. Uh, a lot of teacher leaders and staff leaders. And so we, this is a symbol that we use at every single meeting. So you can see we're both learners um, at, the, at our meetings and at our professional development, and then the, our leadership team's folks go back to their schools and they lead that charge. Um, so we focus on academics and equity with our leadership teams. So some of our leadership teams are here. <laughs> so we pull together, say, one grade level representative from each of the elementary schools to focus in on math, or one grade level representative from each of the grades, each of the schools, to represent science or literacy. Um, and those teams come together between three times a year, maybe six times a year. And that's one of the ways that we're able to promote and distribute the leadership in the district. So we wanted to share some exciting pieces for teaching and learning. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Chair Larkin. Good evening, Superintendent Kelly. We wanted to share a couple pieces about what's happening in teaching and learning this year. There's a lot happening, but these are some new pieces for the school year. The first one is FastBridge, and this is an assessment program, which we started K-8, and it houses a lot of different assessments within it. The first assessment we're asking teachers to really focus on is a literacy assessment, which they're given three times a year, a screener. From that screener, the teachers can look at the data and identify which students need interventions. So they're able to support students with where they're at. And then we really check in with them every two to three weeks to see if they're growing and if that's working. So we've seen a lot of growth happening throughout the year using these assessments. And we require the teachers to use that literacy one, but if you ask most teachers, they've dug into all the others. They came to a meeting and they said, what's all these other assessments that are on there? What are they? And we said, there's math, there's social emotional, and they started using them. So a lot of our teachers have become teacher leaders by using these, and even our students are excited. So we want to share a little piece about that tonight, too. All right. My teacher records me reading on FastBridge. And what we do is we um, read the 
the story from Fast Bridge, and she puts on a timer, and then after when the timer's done, we ask what's our score, and then we ask, um, do we go higher or lower, and my goal is to get into, or go up higher. It's really sweet when you go into the classrooms and watch them do these screenings. You see kids cheering. They're like, what was my last score? Where should I go to? So they're really excited about their own learning this year by looking at the data. Mm-hmm. Our next tool is Dreambox. And I think we've shared a lot about Dreambox and the schools have as well. And it is a math intervention program to support students with their learning. It's adaptive. So if we have a third grader, working on kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade standards, the program really will adjust. So depending on the skill where they're working at, they'll push them down or up, they'll go either way for them. So it's really supporting their learning and showing that growth piece. This is also available at home for students. So we have a lot of students who come to school and tell us how long they've been on it or how excited they are that they've moved up a lot. So on the graph there, it shows the average minutes per week. Our goal really is to get around that 45 minutes, if not a little higher. And then the example chart shows the number of lessons they completed, and this really depends on the number of students. So later on, we'll talk about Columbia Academy and their math interventions. They don't have as many students in this intervention. They have them in another one. That's why the numbers are a little lower. And it really does vary each week as well, depending on what the school is doing. Mm -hmm. But it's great for us as a district and for the principals and admin, as well as as the teachers, to really look at the data and see how things are going. The other program that we're excited about is Gifted. We've done a lot with Gifted second grade through 12th grade this year. There'll be some pictures with the LEAP program up here, but we also have done a lot of professional development. So with the lead of Disa Fabak, she really has pushed to ensure we're supporting our teachers with supporting the gifted students in our district as well as the high achieving, so those who are not qualified for gifted, but still showing that. And so we've heard a lot from teachers that they're excited about the new strategies they've learned and the different pieces that they can incorporate within their classes. (coughs) And these were pictures of the LEAP program at Highland, so the third through fifth grade gifted program. Continuing with gifted, we're excited about the AP program at the high school. And we've seen a lot of success the last couple years. The chart on here shows up until 2017, 2018. And we've already looked at our projected numbers. And our projected numbers for this spring are over 400 tests given. So we're excited about the opportunity for all students to be included. And also looking at the amount of money they're saving for college by taking these courses and taking the exam. They really go into college with that head start. Zena mentioned before about the Striving Readers Literacy Grant. We are excited for Columbia Academy to have two literacy coaches this year. They received a two-year grant from the Minnesota Department of Education. And our two coaches, Tina and Tanya, both T's, are working on many different pieces listed up there, including coaching teachers. So they work right in the classroom with the teacher, which we know is effective professional development. They're leading a literacy leadership team. And that leadership team is doing a book study So it's exciting to see teachers excited about that ongoing PD. They're leading the assessments for Columbia Academy, so the literacy assessments, they're really the lead on that. And then supporting teachers with looking at the interventions or support that they can do in their classroom. And they provide professional development for individual teachers, for the teams of teachers, for the whole school. So they really are receiving all of that support at Columbia Academy. And the Minnesota Department of Education has done a wonderful job creating this. So they're supporting the coaches in their own learning as well as they're moving forward. And coming up tomorrow, I believe it is, there's a book talk at Columbia Academy. So kids during their lunch star period time can sign up. The mid- Half time. Half time (laughs) can sign up for this. And the students will be listening to Matt Burr, who's an EA at Columbia Academy, and he chose a book, and he's going to lead a book talk. And when the kids leave, they all leave with the book. And then the coaches are going to check in with the students on how they thought about the book, what they are going to do next, what other books they could read. So we're excited that that many students wanted to give up their own other time to do it. We limited the number, so we're going to continue to do it throughout the year, but it's a great opportunity for them to build on their interest. 
Continuing with Columbia Academy, Principal Berkus has shared before as well about the math interventions that are happening. We're implementing math interventions using the University of Minnesota support as well as Spring Math, which is a program very similar to FastBridge but specific for math. So um, students take a screener three times a year and from that screener the teacher receives either class-wide interventions or small group interventions. So the teacher is either providing one of those or both for the students, as well as the intervention teachers. So the intervention teachers shared some data recently with us that's listed up there that really they've seen a lot of growth in their students this year and really pushing forward towards meeting that algebra standard. Mm -hmm. So teaching and learning is rooted in equity. Uh, some of the professional development that we have offered this year um, are some ongoing um, multi-day or multi-session professional developments. So many teacher teams and admin teams across the district have read the book, A Good Time for the Truth. And um, we had Sun Yun Shin, the author, the, uh, com she compiled the, or the editor of the book, uh, come to the district. She spoke as one of our keynotes and then also did a session with the high school. Um, Bondo, you can see him there in the photo also did a keynote for the entire um, licensed staff, but then also did a follow-up meeting, which you can see here talking about successes, challenges, and solutions. Um, restorative practices. AVID uh, is also rooted in equity, so our professional development there. Culturally relevant teaching. Exploring implicit bias. A variety of different book clubs. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, we, this year we're really taking a look at um, suspension data and monitoring that and streamlining it with our, um, the matrix that's found in our new handbook and um, striving towards objective discipline. Some of the other professional development, as you can see, um, we have a lot of great um, organizations in the community that come in and do um, work with our teachers, whether it's our Compass Artists, um, whether it's curricular items like Math and Focus, um, folks from the English Learner Education Programming um, at the state level, press reading interventions, um, 1000 Petals, they do a lot of uh, social emotional and yoga calm and different types of um, professional development that way. Responsive Classroom is also another layer of our social emotional programming. <coughs> we are really lucky to have the University of Minnesota just down the street. Uh, they, they, uh, members from the University of Minnesota, whether it's the Reading Research Center or um, that spring math that Tara was talking about, they are here in our district and supporting. Um, and then the Department of Education has um, been a really good resource for us as well this year in supporting. Um, as you know, a major focus for teaching and learning in the schools are PLCs. So we've kind of reinvigorated our PLC work that we're doing this year. We are checking in with principals every single month. The teaching and learning team goes out to the schools to provide support for PLC teams that need it. Um, so that's, that's a, um, a really effective way for teachers to have that time to analyze all of the data. We've shown you um, lots of different intervention systems and different you know, online systems that we're using that are providing us with a lot of data. Uh, and these PLCs give the teachers that time and space to analyze it and move forward. Uh, very, very important um, aspect of our role in teaching and learning is family engagement. Um, we want to be um, communicating out with our families and partnering and engaging with our families. Uh, through um, community conversations, parents reported to us that the different apps that we've got out there are, have been a, an effective way for them to um, see what's going on in the school and get the, receive the information. So this year, pre-K through eighth grade has the opportunity to use the Seesaw app. Um, we are currently looking at usage <laughs> and supporting those who need to, um, who might need support in, in their usage of Seesaw. Um, one thing that we're, we're really happy about with Seesaw, the Seesaw app, is it's not just uh, like a Facebook type app where the teacher posts something and the parents can see it. It's truly interactive. So students also have an account. And, and uh, as an example here on the screen is, um, explain a circuit. So our English learner teachers in the elementary are um, using Seesaw as a way for kids to practice their oral language development. And so they um, listen to the instructions here and then the students record their own voices and only their parents can hear it. But then their parents can comment back 
Um, so it's an instructional tool, it's a parent communication tool. Um, parents can communicate to the school through it and then the schools can communicate back. Videos, photos, all kinds of things we've been using. Uh, our, uh, another um, area of family engagement that we've really worked hard on over the last few years is with our American Indian families. Um, so just wanted to share a few weeks ago, we had in two expert fry bread makers come in and taught the families and children and the groups how to make fry bread, but also talked a lot about the historical pieces and, and what it means and the symbolism of it. Um, so we are continuing to um, engage with our American Indian community and other communities as well. And lastly, our last highlight is, of course, AVID. Um, in this picture, this is from our summer uh, training. In this picture, you're seeing teachers all the way from kindergarten up to 12th grade. So it truly is district-wide. Um, and again, AVID focuses on academic rigor and equity. Um, oftentimes teaching students some of the hidden curriculum, you know, if they're lacking in study skills, that's what the AVID does, is helps, helps you with those study skills, helps you with that dream of going to college or whatever your dream may be, you can decide when you're a 12th grader. Uh, one new partnership that we have this year with AVID is, and they were just here last, or this earlier in the, that was last week, mm -hmm is with Bethel, Bethel University down the street. Um, we're getting tutors from Bethel. And so we had about 10 young college kids coming in and they'll be helping us. We, we often get tutors from the University of Minnesota, but Bethel is new to us. And so they're coming in and tutoring the middle school and high school kids in the AVID classrooms. And they're excited and we're excited about it. So if there's any questions. Do have any questions? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is the pay equity report. Lindsay. Chair Larkin, members of the board, Superintendent Kelly. Tonight I'm here to just give you an information item on the pay equity report. It'll be brought back on the 22nd board meeting, so let's just give you a little update of where we're at. Um, again, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner. All belong, all succeed. And I kind of concentrate on the core value of integrity. So the purpose of the pay equity study is to report salary information on employees to assure that the institution is not discriminating against female employees and their compensation practices. And some background, we have to file a report every three years. We filed a report last in January of 2016, so we're due by January 31st of 2019. And every public sector employer in the state of Minnesota has to file a report and everybody's on a three-year cycle. And we work closely with Springstead Incorporated um, to assist with the study. Um, so there's four tests. The first one is completeness and accuracy test. The second one is statistical analysis test. Then there's a salary range test and an exceptional services pay test. Um, for the, so for the first one, you pass as long as you turn in the report. So if you get the report in by January 31st, we pass test one. And it doesn't matter if you don't pass one of the other prongs, you just have to get the report in. Um, test two, it compares salary data to determine if female classes are paid consistently below male classes of comparable work. So right now with our preliminary results, we do pass in this test. Test three, it looks at the salary ranges and it we measures whether male classes are reaching the top of their salary schedule faster than female classes. And in the past, we haven't passed this part because we're a female dominated workforce. So the teachers have 17 steps, which are female dominated. And so it takes them longer to get to the top. But this year, with the preliminary results, we have passed. So that's good news. Um, the fourth test is the exceptional services pay test. And that analyzes whether there's a larger percentage of male classes receiving longevity or performance pay than female classes. It has to be at 80%, we're at a 78.45 right now. So we won't pass this prong, um, but it doesn't matter if they're eligible to receive it, say in three years, you have to actually receive it by December 31st of 2018. So we just fell short a little bit in this category. Um, so I'll bring the pay equity report forward at the July, or January 22nd meeting. Um, we have to file it by the end of January. And based on the results right now, 
we would receive a notice of noncompliance, which we have received in the past too, and we're able to request a reconsideration, which they have granted in the past because we explained that we are female dominated and we're also really close. We're not like failing that last prong too much. Um, but also based on when that data is submitted, so it could be in May, it could change the report too, so we may pass that fourth prong once we get the notice. So again, I'll bring it forward at the next meeting. So right now it's just information item. Anybody have any questions? I have two questions. Yes. Um, is this just licensed staff or is it all employees? All staff. So um, custodial, food service, everybody? Everybody, you have to work a certain number of days and a certain threshold of time, okay. but it's very minimal of what they want you to report. Okay. And then can you just talk a little bit more about the, the test that we didn't pass? You went over sure. it really quickly and oh, I I'm sorry. I yeah. understand it. Yeah. So the, it's exceptional service. So they look at if you're receiving performance pair longevity, um, but they don't, so I'll say like a clerical employee which is a female dominated class, they um, may be eligible receiving in like say they've been here 10 years, but they've only been here eight. So they wouldn't be able to qualify as receiving it. But then you have a custodian who maybe has been here 10 years and they're receiving it. So they really look at, it's not whether or not you're eligible to receive it when you reach that point. It's if you're receiving it right now. Oh, so it's not who's eligible to receiving it that's receiving it, it's yeah. who's receiving it. Yes, because I asked them that too, because we have a couple where, I mean, we've got some clerical employees that are gonna get in the next couple years, right. but it's based on December 31st, 2018 data. And so it also is comparing all employees in one pool. So yes. it's not comparing like all food service employees right. or so if you mm -hmm. have certain areas that may by nature have higher rate of exodus from employees, maybe you just don't mm -hmm. have people who are there as long or yeah. you know, whatnot, all of that can skew Correct. because you're doing the whole staff as a pool, not each individual department, if you mm -hmm. will. And okay. I did have conversations with Springstead too because they have a person that works just on pay equity and she says it's one of her sticking points too that the fact that they don't look at, you know, you could get it at one point, mm -hmm. that it's in your contract, you have to be here so many years you could receive it, but the fact that you're actually getting it at that moment in time and and that's just then it's really up to the luck of the draw as to how long certain employees have been here and what their gender is at that correct point. and when if we get a reconsideration say in may there might be different employees that get it in may than they did in december right okay. so it could change the numbers thank you yes and once again what's the consequence of not passing that test i mean you said there's a, a letter that we get or what, what happened yes yeah, so it, and for the 2016 report we actually didn't pass three and four and you just do a new report when they submit it to you, so they give you this letter. Um, and last time we just did a reconsideration, just asked them to look at the fact that we are female dominated, we're teaching workforce, which is pretty much female dominated, and they accepted that. And then I also put in the part that, it's kind of the same thing I'm saying, people will get it, the exceptional service pay, they're just not getting it right now. Okay. So the big thing is you have to submit the report, and if you don't submit it, then you're automatically, okay. just don't pass. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks. Thank you. Next up would be the security grants. Good evening, Chair Larkin, Superintendent Kelly, members of the board, school board. Um, this evening, I'm gonna give you a brief update of uh, the Minnesota Department of Education School Safety Grant, um, which we received. <clears throat> um, kind of start with an overview of the grant and kind of go into where we're at with it and give you some timelines. Um, yeah, um, we still have work to do in this area as we move forward with MDE on the grant, but I just wanted to brief the board on where we're at. Uh, there's no governance questions at this time. Um, again, uh, our, our mission, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, uh, all belong, all succeed, and our core values of community excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Um, so in 2018, the Minnesota legislature passed um, school safety grant totaling $25 million. 
and 12.5 million um, was available to the 11 uh, county metro area uh, schools and uh, our districts. And uh, of that, um, those grant proposals that we needed to submit or could submit, um, there was a max award of $500,000 per school. Um, the key focus areas of this grant, it wasn't just open to anything that you wanted. They had um, your focus priority areas and then your secondary areas. Um, so uh, exterior entry security um, was one of the key focus areas. And then communication systems was another key focus area. So uh, to kind of break it down a little bit of what that included as far as exterior security, um, access controls, uh, so visitor management um, systems. Um, we have one here for scanning IDs already. Um, door entry systems, your card access systems, the proximity cards, uh, door hardware upgrades, uh, integrity of doors and glass, so um, that safety glass, um, not necessarily bulletproof, but um, glass is harder to break, uh, slows down um, an intruder from trying to break into the building. Door alarm systems and uh, the physical structure changes focused on the main entry of, of school buildings. Um, so creating those layers of security from that main entrance or that single point of entrance. Um, so those, those were the areas and we focused on our grant proposals on the door hardware upgrades um, and the, you know, improving the integrity of the doors and the glass and then the physical structure changes to the main entrances um, to create those layers of security. We have some layers already implemented at our schools. Um, North Park is, is probably has the least, obviously. We've talked about that a lot, um, amount of layers um, to get into the building. And then it's just um, creating additional layers of security. Um, studies show that um, in looking back at past, um, we'll say school shootings, um, you know, slowing, slowing them down, um, increasing the time that it takes them to ac accomplish something it just saves lives um, because it's police and fire and, and rescue can get there quickly, but we just need to um, try to create those layers for them to go through. So that's what we really focused on. On the communication systems, addition or improving of existing systems within the building uh, for community, like our PA system, uh, equipment and personal electronic emergency notification systems, mobile apps, um, and then external communications, looking at two-way radio systems and or communicating with police, fire, um, you know, those that, you know, what kind of communication tools do we have to increase the speed at which we can communicate with those external people. Um, and then visual notification systems uh, within the buildings. And we focused on the first three um, um, when, in our grant proposals. Um, so the uh, MDE received a total of 1,187 uh, complete applications, um, which was requesting $255.5 million. And remember, I said in the beginning, there was $25 million total um, for the state and the metro area um, had available at 12.5. So it's more than 10 times the amount available funding that schools requested. Um, MDE announced that 90 public school districts um, were awarded grants of 123 sites. So some districts received grant awards for two or more buildings. So of the 1,187, that's not all, only 123, that's not very many. Um, see, Columbia Heights Public Schools submitted six grant proposals, um, again, focusing on those key areas that I explained before, and we were awarded two grants. Um, and uh, Columbia Academy received 77,368, or will receive, um, and North Park was awarded $444,098. Um, so obviously many districts received nothing, and many schools received nothing. We were lucky enough to have two schools awarded. So uh, very fortunate that MDE picked two of our schools. Um, and um, we were looking forward to moving forward with those projects. I can get my presentation to go to the next slide. Uh, Columbia Academy, again, I talked about those focus areas. So um, we're looking at that transaction window um, and uh, redoing that transaction window at Columbia Academy. Uh, and so you still enter the vestibule area, that secure vestibule area. You have that transaction window. And 
um, making that transaction window more secure, um, more and hopefully more user friendly for the interaction between than it currently is. And, and then you're creating those layers of security. So they're credentialing. Um, you know, do you have a purpose in the building? Um, you know, our, you know, we're doing our checks. And, uh, and then if we pass the credentialing and you do have a reason to come in, you're not just waiting for them to send down the student, then we can um, buzz you into the office area. So that's your layer that we're additionally creating. And you're, now you're in the office area. Again, we've been credentialed already before you get to that point. So it's still the main entry vestibule or the vestibule is still secure from that main office. And then, um, then if we need to go into the building from there, then you know, we can be escorted into the building from there by um, a school official. Um, but again, during the school day, you know, again, we're just trying to create those layers. Instead of what happens currently, you just buzz directly into the building. And then, you know, potentially you can go anywhere. Um, so we're, again, we're creating that layers. And remember that focus, one of those focuses was that physical security at the main entrance. Um, so this is just kind of a rendering on the side here of, of, of what I'm talking about. Um, so from the bottom, you're entering, if you were entering the vestibule in the building, then there's just that side door that goes in and the doors at the top that go into the corridor area are actually secured all the time and you're not being buzzed through those anymore. Um, so in order to do that, uh, we would need funds to um, reduce some of the front office area, that main office area. Um, again, I talked about the communication systems, um, the PA system in that building in particular, um, so very fortunate, um, has been repaired many times. Uh, it, those systems are, are way out of warranty and um, some of the parts we can get and some of the parts we can't get. Um, so we're kind of hodgepodging multiple systems together to make it work at this point. So we're very fortunate with that building and then that mobile app. And, and with that mobile app, there's, I don't have a ton of specifics there because there's a lot of different options within that arena. And that ties into um, the communication systems with external. Um, so we're talking, um, we're having meetings coming up this month, um, kind of reassessing um, crisis planning, safety and security um, in our buildings. Um, and uh, th through those meetings, we're gonna be redoing our crisis plan. And uh, so we want this to be part of that conversation and, and it all fits within that window and the timeline I'll talk about, um, which is right now, you know, we're really still finalizing that detailed plan with MDE. We still um, will be submitting that detailed plan um, to MDE and, and we still have to bid the project out and we still have to have that final approval from MDE for our plan. And then we wanna complete that project at Columbia Academy this summer. Um, and really move forward with that. So minimally that physical entry stuff. Um, and then for North Park Elementary, uh, obviously it's a little bit more complicated. Um, with North Park Elementary, we have our bond referendum as well going. Um, so with North Park and with that grant, we focused on constructing a new entry into the building, funneling access through the office. So similar construction to what I just showed with that rendering um, from Columbia Academy. I um, mean, creating those layers of access into that building from that single point of entry. And so we're talking about a transaction window, we're talking about safety glass. Um, again, um, it's, it's, we're doing, um, uh, moving a, an office um, to a different location. Um, so there are gonna be have some things that we have to do within that main office to um, allow that entry into that new office. And obviously when we're doing that kind of work, you're talking about heating and cooling and air conditioning, um, you know, that, that um, that type of work and of course um, we wrote in with that building as well with all our buildings We actually did uh, a new PA system in, in that mobile app um, So that communication because we want to make sure that we're enhancing our ability to communicate in a crisis um, We want we know that time matters um, So, you know, those are our focus areas and the timeline on that is again it's more complicated um, We do have time um, you know technically we have um, um, three years to spend the dollars and we can spend, we can take up to five um, to spend those grant dollars um, because really what we're doing is we're spending the money and we're getting reimbursed um, with those grant dollars. So we have time and, uh, but we're, we're currently working with architectural firm and the construction company on, you know, finalizing the overall project of North Park Elementary and we really need to weave these two projects together and um, so it really needs to happen in conjunction with that. Um, one, it's economical for us to do that and, and two, there's just so much happening and it just has to work that way. So 
um, you know, we're, we're in the depths of getting that timeline ironed out right now. Um, and uh, um, so we'll have more of that in the future. And that's it. Anybody have any questions? I do. Yep. All right. Um, with the North Park specifically, I know that kind of doing some of the work that you that was applied for in the grant is work that was already talked about in doing in what we proposed with the bond. And so, how does that impact the funding? Well, it, it's there. I mean, there really are two. There were two separate projects, um, two separate um, spec'd out, um, two separate planned projects. Um, of course, understanding that now that you know when we there's no way that we could know whether we were gonna be awarded one or the other, or both at the same time. Um, of course, obviously in this scenario, we do have both a grant award from MTE for safety and security, and we, both, and we have a bond referendum. And um, obviously we're gonna, we're gonna stick to you know, what, we, what we said and, and we'll report out on, on implementation for both. And so when we bid these things out, we will be you know, bidding out the specifics um, for both and, and making sure again that we're weaving those together. And, and um, um, I, I think as we move forward, you know, we'll kind of know more how that's all gonna fit together. Um, because like I said, we're still in the depths of, of working with a detailed plan. And once we have that detailed plan, we still have to submit that MT to MDE, and we still have to give approval for that detailed plan. So, um, and, I, and the intention was never to, um, you know, offset one or the other. It's it's really the intention is to, you know, weave them together and maximize um, our efforts, um, both from the bond referendum and construction and safety and security with the school grant. If I remember correctly with the bond referendum for North Park, there were things that we had planned on doing as part of that project that weren't included in the bond referendum. They were part of the capital improvement dollars and some other funding that was available um, as well. Yes. Right? Um, so you can kind of utilize some of that funding in that way. Then, then yeah, I mean, and I, I think through the bond referendum, um, I, we talked a lot about you know those those, what the bond referendum was and, and then what are the things that are priority one and priority two from a long-term facilities and from a capital projects levy. And so I, I don't think it's a new conversation that we really are weaving in funds from a lot of different areas and really trying to maximize the funds that we have in all of those areas um, to do what needs to be done out there. Right, I, I think it's just clear that we talk about and have the community know that it's, it isn't all inclusive, that there are funds coming from yes. multiple pools. And yep. this is, this. we were lucky enough to receive this grant to be one, one of those pools of funds. Yes, which I think that, correct. I wanna thank you and um, your team who wrote the grant, writing grants is not easy. Um, so that was a lot. And I also think you alluded to this too, but just to state again that this still isn't necessarily a done deal in that you know you wrote the grant and you awarded the grant but now you essentially that gives you permission to do the work to put together your actual plan yep. and then that plan has to be resubmitted to MDE before they actually determine that they'll give you the money for that plan right so we're still in that process of what I'll call design stage which will then have to be resubmitted to MDE to, for them to approve before they'll release any funds yep that is correct thank you Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Next up is the first reading <coughs> policy. Vice Chair Severson. All right. Uh, the policy team met and we discussed a few policies, had a first reading. So I'm going to read off that list. It's policy 104, school district mission statement, 532, use of peace officers and crisis teams to remove students with IEPs from school grounds, 602, organization of school calendar and school day, 604, instruction curriculum, 611, homeschooling, 613, graduation requirement, 615, basic standards, testing, accommodations, modifications, and exemptions for IEP, section 504, accommodation and LEP students, uh, 618, assessment of student achievement, 619, staff development for standards, 707, transportation of public students, 709, student transportation safety policy, 722, public data requests. Um, and these will appear, as it says, on a, uh, an agenda for, for approval, future agenda for approval. But Superintendent Kelly, have we had anyone contact us? No, we have not. <coughs> this one will be out there for a while, right? 
available? It'll be, it'll be available. It's um, Don's put them out and they'll be available. <coughs> and they'll be the back for second yep. reading. And just for everyone who might be watching or listening, we try to go through our extensive policies um, on three year cycles. So we're reviewing them, um, going over them. So these were reviewed or, um, help me out, Don, reviewed or revised. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or created. Yep. Or created. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, any questions on that? All right, moving on to action items, board policy, second reading. I'll start with a motion, a second, and then turn it over to Natty for discussion. So if I get a motion to move this forward, please. So moved. Is that Laura? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second. Paula? Mm -hmm. Natty? So we brought back um, policy 413, uh, harassment and violent f violence for, third, for further discussion um, and really addressed, uh, somebody had asked a couple questions about the policy and so we re-brought re back to the policy subcommittee and we discussed it um, further, consulted uh, our district attorney, Karen Kempel, and um, came to some conclusions and, and kind of, not kind of, we went back to the people, to the, to the, to the people who expressed um, questions and offered that. Superintendent Kelly, have we heard anything else on this one? My understanding that the team has talked to um, the folks involved and that it seems to have been resolved and clarified and it was good discussion, it was good for us to take the time to look at it and I, I think what I've heard is that we're, we're good to go, I think. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Any discussion, questions, or comments? Okay. Hearing none, uh, it's 413 is the, the policy. So uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. We will be next going into closed session in accordance with Minnesota Statute 13D.03. The board will meet in closed session for the purpose of discussion negotiation strategies. 746. And I care And for North Park Elementary, uh, obviously, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, with North Park Elementary, we have our bond referendum as well going. Um, so with North Park and with that grant, we focused on constructing a new entry into the building, funneling access through the office. So similar construction to what I just showed with that rendering um, from Columbia Academy um, and creating those layers of access into that building from that single point of entry. And so we're talking about a transaction window. We're talking about safety glass. Um, again, um, it's, it's, we're doing, um, uh, moving a, an office um, to a different location. Um, so there are going to be have some things that we have to do within that main office to um, allow that entry into that new office. And obviously when we're doing that kind of work, you're talking about heating and cooling and air conditioning, um, you know, that, that, um, that type of work. And of course, um, we wrote in with that building as well, with all our buildings, we actually did. Uh, a new PA system in, in that mobile app, um, so that communication, because we want to make sure that we're enhancing our ability to communicate in a crisis. Um, we want, we know that time matters. Um, so, you know, those are our focus areas. And the timeline on that is, again, it's more complicated. Um, we do have time. Um, you know, technically we have um, um, three years to spend the dollars and we can spend, we can take up to five um, to spend those grant dollars. Um, because really what we're doing is we're spending the money and we're getting reimbursed um, with those grant dollars. So we have time, and, uh, but we're, we're currently working with architectural firm and the construction company on you know, finalizing the overall project of North Park Elementary. And we really need to weave these two projects together. And um, so it really needs to happen in conjunction with that. Um, one, it's economical for us to do that. And, and two, there's just so much happening and it just has to work that way. So, um, you know, we're, we're in the depths of getting that timeline ironed out right now. Um, and uh, um, so we'll have more of that in the future. And that's it. Anybody have any questions? I do. Yep. All right. Um, with the North Park specifically, I know that kind of doing some of the work that you that was applied for in the grant is 
work that was already talked about in doing in what we have proposed with the bond. And so, how does that impact the funding? Well, it, it's there. I mean, there really are two. There were two separate projects, um, two separate um, spec'd out, um, two separate planned projects. Um, of course, understanding that now that you know when we. There's no way that we could know whether we were going to be awarded one or the other, or both at the same time. Um, of course, obviously in this scenario, we do have both a grant award from MTE for safety and security, and we both and we have a bond referendum. And um, obviously, we're going to we're going to stick to you know what we what we said and and report out on on implementation for both. And so when we bid these things out, we will be you know bidding out the specifics um, for both and and making sure again that we're weaving those together. And and um, um, I, I think as we move forward, you know, we'll kind of know more how that's all going to fit together. Um, because like I said, we're still in the depths of of working with a detailed plan. And once we have that detailed plan, we still have to submit that MT to MDE, and we still have to give approval for that detailed plan. So, um, and, I, and the intention was never to, um, you know, offset one or the other. It's it's really intention is to, you know, weave them together and maximize um, our efforts, um, both from the bond referendum and construction and safety and security with the school grant. If I remember correctly with the bond referendum for North Park, there were things that we had planned on doing as part of that project that weren't included in the bond referendum. They were part of the capital improvement dollars and some other funding that was available um, as well. Yes. Right? Um, so you can kind of utilize some of that funding in that way. Then, then yeah, I mean, and I, I think through the bond referendum, um, I, we talked a lot about you know those those, what the bond referendum was and, and then what are the things that are priority one and priority two from a long-term facilities and from a capital projects levy. And so I, I don't think it's a new conversation that we really are weaving in funds from a lot of different areas and really trying to maximize the funds that we have in all of those areas um, to do what needs to be done out there. Right, I, I think it's just clear that we talk about and have the community know that it's, it isn't all inclusive, that there are funds coming from yes. multiple pools. And yep. this is this. We were lucky enough to receive this grant to be one, one of those pools of funds. Yes, which I think that, correct. I want to thank you and um, your team who wrote the grant. Writing grants is not easy, um, so that was a lot. And I also think you had alluded to this too, but just to state again that this still isn't necessarily a done deal. In that you know you wrote the grant and you awarded the grant, but now you essentially that gives you permission to do the work to put together your actual plan. Yep. And then that plan has to be resubmitted to MDE before they actually determine that they'll give you the money for that plan. Right. So we're still in that process of what I'll call design stage, which will then have to be resubmitted to MDE to, for them to approve before they'll release any funds. Yep, that is correct. Thank you. Anything else? Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Next up is the first reading <laughs> policy, Vice Chair Severson. All right, uh, the policy team met and we discussed a few policies at a first reading. So I'm gonna read off that list. It's policy 104, school district mission statement, 532 use of peace officers and crisis teams to remove students with IEPs from school grounds, 602 organization of school calendar and school day, 604 instruction curriculum, 611 homeschooling, 613, graduation requirement. 615, basic standards, testing, accommodations, modifications, and exemptions for IEP. Section 504, accommodation and LEP students. Uh, 618, assessment of student achievement. 619, staff development for standards. 707, transportation of public students. 709, student transportation safety policy. 722, public data requests. Um, and these will appear, as it says, on a, uh, an agenda for, for approval, future agenda for approval. But Superintendent Kelly, have we had anyone contact us? No, we have not. <coughs> this one will be out there for a while, right? Available? It'll, be, it'll be available. It's um, Don's put them out, and they'll be available. And they'll, they'll be the back for second yep. reading. And just for everyone who might be watching or listening, we try to go through our extensive policies um, on three-year cycles. So we're reviewing them, um, going over them. So these were reviewed or, um, help me out, Don, reviewed or revised. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Or created. Or created. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, any questions on that? All right, moving on to action items, board policy, second reading. I'll start with a motion, a second, and then turn it over to Natty for discussion. So if I get a motion to move this forward, please. So moved. Is that Laura? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second. Paula? Mm -hmm. Natty? So we brought back um, policy 413, uh, harassment and violent f violence for, third, for further discussion. Um, and really addressed, uh, somebody had asked a couple questions about the policy, and so we re-brought re back to the policy subcommittee and we discussed it um, further, consulted uh, our district attorney, Karen Kempel, and um, came to some conclusions and, and kind of, not kind of, we went back to the people, to the, to the, to the people who expressed um, questions and offered that. Superintendent Kelly, have we heard anything else on this one? My understanding that the team has talked to um, the folks involved and that it seems to have been resolved and clarified and it was good discussion. It was good for us to take the time to look at it. And I, I think what I've heard is that we're, we're good to go, I think. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Any discussion, questions, or comments? Okay. Hearing none, uh, it's 413 is the, the policy. So uh, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, we will be next going into closed session in accordance with Minnesota Statute 13D.03. The board will meet in closed session for the purpose of discussion negotiation strategies. 746. Get into an open session <laughs> at 848. Um, we were in a closed session in accordance with Minnesota Statute 13D.03. We met in a closed session for the purpose of discussing negotiation strategies. We are now back in open sessions. Does anybody have anything for board topics tonight? The middle, middle school it. musical uh, is coming up on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 o'clock at the PAC right here at the high school. And it's uh, $3 a person or $10 max for a family. Sunday too. Isn't it Sunday? And Sunday yes. at 2. Yeah, Sunday yeah. at 2. 2. Yeah. Two. Okay. And high school um, conferences on Thursday. Conferences right? Thursday. And mm -hmm. the meetings for if your children are taking any of the AP courses mm -hmm. or the Anoka Ram. And the yep. Anoka Ramsey stuff too, yeah. yeah. And yeah. as the Valley View rep, the Valley View Sing, Kindergarten Sing is midday, just if parents are watching this. On Friday, the, is that the 11th? That would be correct. Yeah. Anything else? Hey, we're going to adjourn the meeting at 849.